In the previous video, I started talking about why malicious software is really getting through, why it's able to bypass existing protection mechanisms, and ultimately, why it's compromising systems. And in that previous video, I focused primarily on techniques employed by the attackers. What I'd like to do in this video is briefly, and really at a mile high level, dissect why it is that traditional anti-malware approaches aren't able to keep up with all the different threats that are out there. So for starters, let's consider signatures. And signatures are the, the mainstay, the real bread and butter of most traditional anti-malware technologies out there. It's what most vendors really rely on as their first line of defense. Now with signature-based approaches, anti-malware vendors basically try to see if a threat instance that you encounter matches one that they know about. Now the challenge, as you might imagine, with signature-based approaches is that they look for either exact matches or, or near exact matches. And so as a result, uh, techniques like uh, polymorphism, and, and polymorphism is something that can be implemented by a packer, are able to uh, quite easily circumvent these types of uh, signature-based approaches. Okay. Now, every vendor on the planet actually is well aware of this issue. I would be shocked if there's a vendor out there that does not consider this to be an issue for them. And so to really bolster what we call their detection rate, their detection rate, or what's also known as the, the true positive rate, a lot of vendors employ other techniques. And uh, one particular technique that uh, vendors employ is a technique known as generic detection. And there are different ways in which you can do uh, generic detection. So one way in which you can do generic detection is through what's called behavioral detection. Behavioral detection. And you can also do generic detection through things like heuristics. Okay, heuristics. Now the idea behind generic detection is that you start to look for generic indicators of maliciousness. And this is based on perhaps actual actions in the case of behavioral detections, or it can be based on uh, general characteristics in the case of heuristic detections, okay? And the idea is that based on these more general characteristics, maybe you can identify something that you weren't able to catch using specific techniques like signatures. And this approach, it sounds really fantastic in theory. And the reason is that behavioral or these more generic techniques are in some sense a catch-all, since they aren't restricted to any one particular set of threats that you had to know about previously. Though I do think they are a bit of a, a nebulous catch-all. Okay, you can put this technology on the endpoint, you can put it on a sandbox, you can have it on a sandbox running on the network, and so on. And yet, you have to ask yourself, you know, if this approach is so great, why are organizations getting compromised left, right, and center? After all, you know, there are organizations that have uh, technologies running on the endpoint, right? They are, there are technologies that uh, run on the network, and, and a lot of organizations have behavioral and generic technologies that run uh, in these different environments. Okay, so it turns out that one of the major challenges with this approach is that there are a lot of legitimate software instances out there where if you just consider the actions, the underlying actions, it's hard to distinguish that legitimate software from malicious software. Okay, the reality is that determining whether software is malicious or not, that's actually in many ways, it's a moral decision. And it's really a subjective one at that. And computers ultimately, well, they're not very good. In fact, they're quite poor at being moralizers. So for example, let's say you see a piece of software that's copying data from your system. Is that software bad? Well, you know, it could be backup software. Or maybe you're uploading an attachment or sharing a file with a colleague. The, you know, there are legitimate cases in which you might exfiltrate data from your own system. Uh, likewise, what if you see that there is software running on your system that allows a third party to access your system remotely? Is that software malicious? Well, again, it could be a legitimate piece of software that facilitates technical support. And there are, again, legitimate software applications that, that do this sort of thing. And this list actually goes on and on and on. Okay? When vendors develop technology for behavioral detection, that technology has to work in actuality for every system that's either directly or indirectly protected under it. And that could mean literally hundreds of millions of systems, each of which might have tens of thousands of files on it. Okay, so the odds of making an incorrect decision, the odds of labeling an otherwise legitimate file as malicious, those odds are suddenly tremendous. Okay, 
Now, when a vendor labels or incorrectly labels a file as malicious when it's actually clean, we call that incorrect decision, we call that a false positive. Okay, a false positive. All right. And to address the situation, vendors, and really to address the situation, I mean to mitigate the risk of false positives, vendors actually pretty much try to turn the knob to be really conservative so that they actually only call something bad if they are absolutely certain that it's actually bad. Okay? And the reason they have to be absolutely sure is that for every one bad file out there, okay, for everyone that's really out there, there may be thousands or, or tens of thousands of legitimate applications that are on your system. And each of those legitimate files is a landmine that's got to be sidestepped to arrive at a correct disposition for that one bad file, that one file that's actually bad. And so with respect to any technology, vendors really understand that there is a trade-off between the detection rate okay, and the false positive rate. Ultimately, the trade-off is that the higher the higher the detection rate, the higher the false positive rate. And so you do have a curve that kind of represents a trade-off between, between these two different rates. Okay? And that makes sense. If you're aggressive, you'll catch more threats, but you're also likely to have some innocent casualties as well. So to keep the false positive rate in check and to really kind of keep it at a reasonable level, when you're using behavioral or generic technologies, as I mentioned earlier, vendors really turn the knob towards being more conservative. Effectively, what they're doing is they're titrating. They're kind of watering down their capabilities so that they don't make a mistake. But that, in turn, significantly harms the true positive detection rate. If you lower the false positive rate, if you bring that down, you're also going to be lowering the true positive rate or detection rate. Okay? And attackers know this. They're very well aware of it. And they realize that it won't take a lot to circumvent these behavioral technologies. It might take a modicum of extra effort. Maybe they have to throw in a few, I don't know, clean-looking actions or maybe a few clean-looking characteristics so that they uh, reduce the confidence of the vendor in making a determination that the file is bad. Uh, but that might be just enough to avoid getting detected. Uh, they could also take their malware and maybe make it a little bit less overt about its aim. Maybe they can, they can not have it work as fast, or maybe they can put it to sleep for certain periods of time. These are all techniques that malware authors use to circumvent behavioral technologies. Now, I, I do want to stress here that this is all a very, very high level overview. Okay? There are a lot of details and nuances that I am glossing over. But I think that the point, the main point, still remains. And ultimately, techniques that are in play today, they are far from a panacea. They are not a silver bullet. They have limitations, and that's why threats are continuing to get through. So hopefully this video and the, the previous one gave you a better sense of why we're seeing so many systems get compromised.